How do we sort, sort out health care from not health care? Well, we've tried to make it very easy, David. Good to be with you this afternoon. Very simply, health care left the fold <clears throat> first week of January. So our fourth quarter results include what was a very strong fourth quarter in health care. But as we looked for, forward to the 2023 guide, what we try to do is really adjust everything out. So when we talk about 23, talk about a high single digit top line projection, earnings in the 160 to $2 range, that's coming off a 77 cent equivalent last year, adjusting for healthcare no longer being part of the company. Free cash, similarly, last year was 3.1 billion without healthcare. Coming into this year, we anticipate landing somewhere between 3.4 and $4.2 billion. So nice step ups in earnings and cash, despite healthcare being off on its own now. You're going in the right direction, Clue. You're going up as far as I can tell, free cash flow as well as profitability. At the same time, the street had a little hesitancy because the forward guidance on the earnings per share was a little less than they had hoped for. What's constraining you right now in the earnings per share, would you say? What's the biggest constraint for GE? Well, I think we exited <clears throat> 2022, David, with tremendous momentum, the fourth quarter print for, uh, for the end of 22 had us, I think, at an exceptionally strong revenue level, up 11%, as you well know, led by our aerospace business. Earnings were up 51%, cash up 16%. So it's really that momentum that we bring into 2023, given what's happening with healthcare, given the balance sheet improvements, we're, we're now down over $100 billion of debt since 2018. <clears throat> I'm sure models are adjusting but we come into this year feeling very good about where we are from an aerospace perspective. We expect the top line to be up mid-teens to high teens with services and new units continuing to improve given the aerospace recovery. We also anticipate better performance in our Vernova business. We know we've got challenges in renewables, but we think we're going to have a better year in 23. And that just sets us up overall, I think, not only for good results this year, but in turn, the second step of the transformation whereby we take GE Vernova public as we did healthcare earlier this month. Just where I wanted to go, where on the schedule for spinning off, if I can call it power, but it's Vernova is the name of it. Where are you on, on the timetable of that? Are you still looking at the beginning of 2024? David, GE Vernova will include both our power and renewables businesses. We said we would bring them forward in, in a second step and, and we're very much on that path. There's a lot of work that we need to do internally just to, to rewire and replumb the business, just like we did with healthcare. We know the underlying operating performance has to be better. And I think what we've seen over the last year, both in terms of pricing as well as cost improvements, set us up to do that. And all the while, one thing we didn't expect, or I should say two things we didn't expect, <clears throat> back November of 21, we, when we announced this move, we were not anticipating the Inflation Reduction Act. And we didn't know that a tragedy would unfold as it has in Ukraine. Both, uh, so, changed the, both changed the outlook for the market and, in turn, the leadership position we enjoy within it. Well, I wanted to pursue specifically the renewables, because as I looked through the documents that you uh, released this today, that was the one that sort of jumped out, that that was not doing as well. Re renewables, if anything, look like they're going the wrong direction right now. What's the cause of that? And what do you need to do between now and the beginning of 2024 to make sure this spinoff is going to work the way you want it to? Well, I think when we looked at the, uh, the results today, clearly aerospace led the way. Power showed its stability. We know the uh, renewables business has a ways to go. What we really need first and foremost, David, is the Inflation Reduction Act to kick in to give us more volume in the U.S. market. We're in the middle of a, uh, a lull in that regard. This is our best market, our biggest market geographically. And when we get that volume coupled with the underlying productivity and cost improvements that we've made, we think that renewables and in turn Vernova will be on its way. Well, I'm, I'm wondering what the pot of gold at the end of that rainbow when it comes to renewables. In, in this sense, I, I get nervous when a business is totally dependent upon the government. Is that renewables business right now to have, be a good business? Does it require things like the Inflation Reduction Act? How can it sustain itself and be profitable going forward? Well, David, I would step back, be it the Inflation Reduction Act, be it what's happening as we electrify and change or accelerate the energy transition given events in Ukraine, over the next decade, there is no question that we will see the world decarbonize. We will undergo an energy transition. And the portfolio products and capabilities that GE will bring to bear to help our customers 
meet that challenge, be it gas turbine, wind turbine, what we do in small modular reactors in the nuclear space, what we can do from a grid perspective, particularly digitally, all of that will be part of the solution. And that to me is what will create that pot of gold that you referenced a moment ago. It's hard work, it's important work, and it will be worth doing. Could the renewables business hold you back on spinning off for Nova? Well, I think we know and we've known for some time that our performance in renewables will pace what we're able to do with Vernova. Uh, let's go back to aerospace for a moment, if we could, Larry. Uh, it is a success story, as far as I can tell. But what about supply chain? You've had some struggles, as everyone else has. Are you making progress? David, I think we are making progress, but not because the supply chain environment has gotten any easier. It hasn't gotten harder, but it continues to be tough and it's tough on a daily basis. I couldn't be more pleased though with what our teams have been doing with our suppliers, with our supplier suppliers, and even in our own shops to bust bottlenecks, to deal with constraints, to make sure we're able in turn to deliver for both our airframer and our airline customers. As you look at your business, and for the moment include, if you would, uh, Vernova as well, because you haven't spun it off yet, uh, how susceptible are you to the ups and downs of the economy in the United States and globally? Because we heard recently that perhaps there would be sort of a rolling recession around the world. What does that do to your business? Well, I would never tell you, David, that we will be immune from any, any downturn, but I think we're going to be resilient, right? We come into this year with tremendous backlog at aerospace. That's what behind the, the mid to high teens top line guide. Again, we've got building backlogs in Vernova as well, stability in gas. We've talked to what the IRA will do for our wind businesses. And that really, I think, will play out somewhat independent of what happens in the, in the economy. We're not a short cycle business. We've got 60% of our revenues now in services, but they really are tied to the aerospace recovery and the energy transition. I think those are good places to be in 2023. Finally, Larry, just take a half step back, if you would, with the spinoff of the of the healthcare business that you did. What did that mean for the GE shareholder? I mean, who, who, what, did, what was the practical effect of the GE shareholder? Well, in effect, David, what we did the first week of January was distribute a $30 billion dividend in the form of the shares in GE Healthcare, an exciting digital healthcare company that I think the market and others are really beginning to appreciate in full. Given what we did in the fourth quarter last year, now that it trades independently, I think people see that this isn't just a GE subsidiary. This is an important, good business in its own right. 